Hey everyone, welcome to the fourth episode of Cloud Cafe, a series about cloud app development on the Atlassian platform. My name is Anmol Agrawal and I'm a developer advocate at Atlassian. I help ecosystem developers build apps for our cloud products. In previous episodes, you learned about the Atlassian developer platform and how to build cloud apps using the frameworks we provide. Once you have your app ready, you may want to distribute and sell your apps to Atlassian customers. That is possible by listing your app on our marketplace and that's what we are going to focus on in this episode. Before we go further, let's take a look at the agenda for this episode. We'll start off by getting familiar with the Atlassian marketplace, understanding what it is and why it's beneficial to app developers. Then we are going to talk about what makes up a listing, give a good example and a bad example and break down the elements of a listing. Next, we'll walk you through the listing creation process where we will also highlight the common areas of confusion that app developers face and how to resolve them. Lastly, we are going to talk about the approval criteria from a team's point of view who is responsible for approving the apps behind the scenes to give you an understanding of what we look for. The Atlassian Marketplace platform provides a convenient means for you to distribute and sell your apps for Atlassian products. Some of the things that are possible through our marketplace are, you get access to Atlassian's large customer base. Customers can try or buy your app right from their product instance like Jira or Confluence. You can take advantage of our licensing support. Atlassian takes care of the checkout process. And it's a great way to make money and profit by participating in the business of selling apps. You can check out our marketplace at marketplace.atlassian.com. Before we dive into how to create a listing, let's look at few reasons why you would want to list your app in our marketplace. For that, I would like to mention two figures. More than 60% of Atlassian customers have at least one app installed on their instances. So if you have a solid app, you have an opportunity to reach a wide audience who like to use apps for their daily tasks. The total amount of sales our marketplace has since inception in 2012 is more than a billion dollars. Few companies, let alone enterprise software marketplaces, reach a milestone of this caliber. This shows we have an ever-growing number of app developers, customers, and adoption rate of the apps, and you have the chance to profit off of this. To start off, what makes up a listing? Let's break it down. Let's take a look at what makes a good listing. This is an example of a listing that we'll create by the end of this episode. This has lots of information, is colorful, and has a bunch of images. This gives an idea about what your app does to the users. If you move down, you see more information is present. If the user is interested in app from the above section, they move down to learn more about it. Let's look at a bad example. Here, you see the same app, but listed in not an ideal way. It has a random image of a map, there is no proper description or images or videos of what the app does. So there is no way to know if this is a game-changing app which could make users' lives better. Let's go back to the good example and see what are its key elements. Firstly, we have the title. You see, it has a keyword, maps. Another good practice is to mention the product it is for. In this case, it is for Confluence. So if a user searches for say, maps for Confluence, this would be written in the results. Moving down, we have a tagline, which is a short summary with few keywords, which gives brief description about what this app does. It is important that keywords are present in the title and tagline separately, as our algorithm takes that into consideration while returning search results and rankings. Besides it, 
we have what we call a hero image or video, which could be a link to a YouTube video. Many app developers choose to include an explainer video in their listings. This could be a homemade screen share video or a professionally animated video. Either way, make sure it conveys what the app does and how it solves the customer's problem. Moving down further, we see more details section where you can put the most information about the app. Do keep in mind that this field is mandatory, otherwise you risk your listing being rejected. Beside it, we have a privacy and security section where you can find the links to privacy and security policy of the app. Below that is resources section, which has links to resources of your app, which we asked during the listing creation process. All right, enough theory. Let's jump into actual creation process. We'll be using the Countries app for Confluence that we created via Connect Framework in episode two. If you have not checked it out, the link to that episode will be mentioned in the description below. The first step is to navigate to your vendor account in Marketplace. In the top right corner of marketplace.atlassian.com, there is an avatar icon. Click on that and log in with your Atlassian ID. Once logged in, click on your avatar and select publish a new app from the drop down menu. Once you select that, it takes you to the first page of the process. If you do not have a vendor account, you can create one by going into the link, register your organization and contact details that is just below the vendor select box. First thing you notice here are the three options to upload your app. There are three different types of listings that you can create. First option is upload your app artifact, which could be a jar, OBR or Jira workbook file. This option is applicable if your app is for data center or server products like Confluence server. Once you upload the artifact, it is hosted on marketplace from where it is downloaded onto users instance. Next option is my app is indirectly installable. If you have your own platform or marketplace, which integrates with Atlassian products without being installed on users instances, this is the right option for you. In this case, you provide all the details like app key, name, version, build number, and compatible products. The key difference here is the app file location, which is an external URL from where the customers can set up the integration and has all the documentation for it. Last option is provide a URL to your artifact, which could be a jar, OBR, Jira workbook, or a JSON file. This app option is useful if your app is for server, data center, or cloud products. In case of cloud, you have control over where your app is hosted, and this is specifically for connect app. Artifact refers to the app descriptor file which describes the app to Atlassian Marketplace. To learn more about Connect App and Descriptor, you can check out the second episode of this series where Ralph has explained these concepts really well. Once you hit enter URL, a pop-up comes up where you enter the URL of the descriptor. When you submit it, the page will be populated with few values like app key and name stored in the descriptor. You will notice that version and build number is not required as Marketplace has its own kind of versioning and it automatically takes care of it. After you have gone through that, you reach Get Started page. Here, the main field is Payment Model, which is currently paid via Atlassian. Please note that to switch from free to paid or paid to free version, you have to release new version of the app. In Connect App, you can do this by changing the value of enable licensing key and descriptor file, where true means paid and false means the free app. Next page is about app. Here, you can enter all the details to create your listing, like your app's name and logo. Next field is summary. This does not appear in the marketplace itself. This appears in UPM or Universal Plugin Manager, which is a window to marketplace and is inbuilt in each Atlassian product. 
and summary is the advertisement for app. This enables customer to install an app from within their Atlassian product without navigating to marketplace. After that, we have more details field, which refers to the detailed description we saw earlier. You can also add Google Analytics account ID that allows you to track traffic to your app on Google Analytics. Last field is for personal data. If your app collects users' personal data like name, email, you should declare that to follow GDPR guidelines. Let's move on to the next page, page design. Here, you can select layout for your listing from options that we provide. First is basic. This doesn't have any images or videos, only text. This is suitable for private apps which are still being tested and you don't want it to be public yet. Next layout is highlights. Here is an example of this format. In this format, we get a, get a tagline running across at the top and three images with short descriptions highlighting specific features of the app. Next option is hero image. We saw this example earlier and this could be an image or a YouTube video. Lastly, we have a hero and highlights layout, which is a combination of previous two layouts and provides the most information to your customers. After this comes the version page. First thing you notice is a checkbox for beta release. If this is checked, we add an icon in front of your listing saying this is in beta phase. You can ask for feedback or provide an issue tracker for your customers to do testing and give you feedback. Moving down, we get a field for release summary where you can mention what's new in this app version and describe new features and bug fixes. If your app is paid via Atlassian, it is required to have support details, which is the last section of this page. Here, you provide all the information including license type applicable to your app, if this app version is officially supported by you, where can customers go if they want to learn more about your app via documentation, terms and conditions, and security and privacy statement. This is the last page of the process. You agree to the publisher agreement and then hit submit. The next logical step to do is to set up pricing, which you can do from pricing tab in apps page. You can learn more about pricing, payment and billing from the link mentioned in the description below. Now let's talk about the approval criteria behind the scenes of team actually approving. Once you submit a listing, a ticket is generated in our service desk, which looks something like this. If you or our team have any issues or questions regarding the functionality of the app, this is where we communicate. What you see here is an auto response that is added, which describes what the process is, how long it is going to take and what to expect. While we get tons of tickets for app listing, many do get rejected automatically. So let's look at some of the reasons of automatic rejections. Main reason that we see is listing lacking details, as we saw in bad example before. This is mostly rejected by the automation that we have before it goes through manual verification. In fact, 15% of all the rejections is due to this reason. In such cases, our team doesn't start with the approval process of the app. So please make sure you provide as much detail as possible about your app. Next one is infringement of Atlassian trademark. We have branding guidelines you need to adhere to, like you can't use our logos as your app logo or follow proper naming conventions. You can learn more about these branding guidelines from the link provided in the description below. Another reason is providing no documentation or support platform. These are important as this is how customers can learn more about your app, give feedback, recommend new features, or reach out to you in case any issue arises. Some good examples of documentation that we have seen are list of app prerequisites. If there is a need for example, a project in Jira for your app to work, let the customers know as it is helpful in long run. 
overview of the apps function. Marketplace listing is a good place to start but is limited by the amount of information you can post. If you have a website dedicated to explaining all the features of app, you can get much more information across. Installation guide. If the app is not easy to install, customers would move to other apps which provide easier experience. This is a key component when they decide to try an app. Administrator's guide. Somebody has to keep the app running on their instance or pass those responsibilities. It's good to provide information on how to do that. User's Guide Everyday users who are going to use your app would like to know detail how to perform certain tasks. Finally, inappropriate or offensive content in listing. This is pretty self-explanatory. Here is a bonus tip to help your app reach out to wider audience. Once you have created an app, it's important that any beta testers or early users give your app a review. This will help you gain traction as most users are not keen to be the first one to test out a new app. To learn more about Atlassian Marketplace, you can head over to developer.atlassian.com slash platform slash marketplace. There you have it. Now you have all the information you need to make your app reach thousands of customers. All of the links and videos mentioned in this episode can be found in the description. If you have questions or need help building your app, please head over to our developer community, community.developer.atlassian.com, where there's a huge community of app developers and Atlassians willing and eager to help you. We look forward to seeing you succeed.